What? An unboxing video? That's right. I got a new camera to play with now. So we're going to take things back to the old school format where I unbox something first. You may have noticed the box is already partially open. That's because when I started recording, the SD card failed to record about 10 seconds after I hit the button. So take two. <laughs> oh man, that's a mangled box. You're in the middle of the way, MJ. First up, we have the camera, very important. I really ought to get a case for this thing. I didn't think about that, dang. We got a lens cover. Got a little, little mic, little USB charger thingy. You know what I should have bought along this camera? A freaking like circular light halo ring thing, whatever those are. I see everybody has those nowadays. Micro USB charging cable. Strap. That's always important. Of course, battery. I didn't mention that. So, Got our instruction manuals. It was gonna. It, it said it might not include these. I'm kind of glad that it did. We're gonna fire this bad boy up now. Okay. So that opens like that. Oh wait a minute. Before I do this, I forgot. One more piece of the puzzle. Ta-da! 128 gigabyte SD card. Power on. Power on, nope, no. Okay, plug this in here. Plug this into the handy dandy desk lamp adapter. The box out of the way. Figure out where this plugs into. Oh, no, that's just HDMI, or is it? Okay, 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 it's got the, yeah, okay. Okay, there we go, now we got a power light. Should we just let it charge for a bit? Oof, man, now it's like, oof, like roughly 45 minutes later, I had to go take care of some business. There, there we go. Hey, yeah, it's holding a charge a little bit. So let me start things off by saying I'm not a camera guy or enthusiast. However, I am really enjoying how this thing is working out so far. And since I'm still figuring a lot of things out with this camera, I'm just gonna do like a general overview and graze over everything. Photo and video quality is quite impressive and I'm really liking the 4K burst feature which seems to always capture the moment no matter how fast they're happening. One thing I do have to complain about with this camera is that it seemed to be kind of picky with the SD cards I put so I'm using a micro SD card with an adapter and one of the adapters I was using the camera didn't really seem to like. And then the SD card that I bought for the camera didn't even work at all. Like it, the camera just was like, yeah, no, sorry, man. I'm not, I'm not even going to try this. SD card's now formatted. I hope it requires an XFAT format. Um, Cause it can only write as XFAT or NTFS. So put this back in here, close it up. Close it up. Come on. What? What are you talking about? Bruh, this memory card was formatted by an external... Okay, well, can I format it to the right one now? However, when I stuck it in my other camera, I didn't even care. It just, you know, like, no big deal. It was like, okay, cool, now I got 128 gigs of storage. Then I ordered a new SD card, which did work with this camera, luckily, and I was able to take 4K burst shots and really nice video in 4K and all that. 
and while I do really enjoy the 4K burst feature, it is a little bit disappointing that I can't seem to find a way to export every single shot that's in the 4K burst. It seems to only let me pick a frame and then export that, on, that one frame because when I put the SD card into my laptop and look at the burst shots, it just shows up as an MP4 file. So essentially when I plug it into my laptop, if I want to turn the 4K burst into a single shot, I got to screenshot it in a funny way. The real kicker is that Panasonic's own software, Photo Fun Studio, also exports the burst shot as an MP4 file. Bruh. And another question, why would you use this to copy your pictures over when you can just drag and drop them? Like, it's so much quicker and easier, and even when I copied the MP4 file, it took longer than just dragging and dropping it. This camera also does have Wi-Fi built into it. I haven't really touched it that much because I'm more of a just pull the SD card out and stick it in the laptop kind of guy. However, in the manual it advertises that SD cards are entirely optional and that you could just stream to an external device such as a laptop or a smartphone. In conclusion, it's a great piece of hardware, it packs a wide variety of features into one little compact, somewhat speaking, form factor. I only paid about $230 for this one, it was on eBay as an open box. And I'm sure that in 2020 the prices of this camera will continue to fall. But that's all I have for right now. Um, make sure if you want to stay in the loop, go ahead and follow my social media accounts at Ifillet Projects on Instagram and Twitter and at underscore the OG Alex on Twitter as well. That's my personal account. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and just have a great day.